Hello there, I'm Mount Payne 27 and this is Dean of Doom, the show where we give grades to classic and contemporary Doom wads. Why? Because ranking things is fun. Today's episode will be dedicated to Alien Vendetta, one of the most influential community-made mega wads ever. It was released in 2001, but we're going to be reviewing the 2002 release that was approved for Compet End speedrunning, and we'll be ignoring the 2016 Black Label version for expediency's sake. We've got a lot of ground to cover with this one, so I'll limit my opening comments to this. Alien Vendetta was one of the main reasons why I started the show. Outside of Doom World, you're not really going to find anyone who knows anything about Alien Vendetta, and YouTube is particularly devoid of discussions related to non-vanilla Doom, so I set out to create a show that could sing the praises of special Doom wads while giving potential new players a glimpse of what they're getting into. Alien Vendetta, I believe, is particularly deserving of this treatment. I don't do this often, but in this video I'm going to display the level designer of each map, because I want to spotlight the authors both for their prowess and for their distinct personalities. Now before we dive in, here's how the show works. We'll give each level in the wad two grades. One for quality and one for difficulty. We grade quality from A to F and difficulty from X to E. X for extreme, E for easy, and A through D in between. A grade A level is fun, memorable, visually distinctive, creative, and a fair challenge. Lower grades indicate that the level lacks some or all of these qualities. Bear in mind that I'm not a doom god, and these are just my opinions, so our definitions of difficulty and great map design will surely differ. Disagreeing is part of the fun, after all. For the first timers in the audience, here are the rules. 1. We play on ultraviolence, or in this case, I'm a doom god. Again, note that I'm not. 2. We play each level from a pistol start. 3. In order to review the wad, I must have played it at least twice. 4. Saves are allowed, but discouraged. And 5. I go for 100% kills in all levels, making certain exceptions in cases where it's just not worth it. I play on Z-Doom with compatibility settings on strict. Now, to the wad. Map 1. Sunset. Alien Vendetta's opener turns the player onto its aesthetics immediately. Despite being really brown, the map's lighting is noticeably nuanced, and the shadows really bring out the twilight here. This map is short and easy, but don't expect that to be a trend. For right now, enjoy the gorgeous orange skybox and the secrets, which are quite creatively hidden. Sunset always gets me excited to play the rest of the Megawatt. It's a really solid opener. Grade, B+. Difficulty, D-. Map 2, Rusty Rage. This map can really smack around an unwary player, markedly stepping up the intensity. This is an Anders Johnson map. He worked on the plurality of Alien Vendetta's maps, and he's not one to show mercy. Try to sprint through the first hallway and you'll find yourself weaponless and surrounded by a dozen shotgunners. You want that secret soul sphere? You'll be getting a visit from 16 chain gunners. Yellow key? Here's an arch file. Rusty Rage is essentially a beginner's guide to Alien Vendetta. It teaches you to use your head, expect fierce retaliation for rewards, and to always give as good as you get. Grade, B-. Difficulty, C. Map 3, Cargo Depot. Cargo Depot is a good tech-based level with some fine detailing that plays a bit like one of TNT Evolution's early maps. The combat is nothing to write home about, but I love this secret cave with the yellow key and the waterfalls, the train tracks, and this neat cargo ship outside. Ammo is tight, if you're dumb like me and forget you have Berserk, so you may have to punch a tomato or two on your way out. By AV standards, this level is essentially filler, but it's still a cut above vanilla in terms of lighting, layout, and texturing. Grade, B-. Difficulty, D. Map 4, Seclusion. The first thing you'll notice is the level starts you at the end of the train tunnel you went through on your way out of Cargo Depot. This little bit of continuity really adds to the immersion, and gets you psyched up to keep exploring. The second thing that you'll notice is the high enemy count, nearly 300 monsters. Seclusion is reminiscent of Knee Deep in the Dead, as it's crawling with hit scanners, but equally shored up with Romero-esque secrets to prepare the player. It's a great feeling when the map throws whole courtyards and wall-to-wall -wall hallways of monsters at you, because at this point, Alien Vendetta is trying to make you feel powerful. Don't worry, your comeuppance is imminent. Anyway, I'm a huge fan of the combat and the electronic soundtrack. Seclusion's a winner. Grade, A-, difficulty, C-. Map 5, Crimson Tide. Angsty and short, Crimson Tide seems to pay a lot more attention to its setting, a brown castle surrounded by a bloody sea, than its combat. I can't say I'm a huge fan of this one, mainly because it feels like a postponement of the action after map 4. If you want 100% kills, I believe you have to jump into the blood, grab a rad suit, and kill this extremely out of the way pinky and chain gunner. That's unkind placement if you ask me. Grade, C+, difficulty, D. Map 6, Hillside Siege. Get ready for the first big difficulty spike of Alien Vendetta, this level is indeed an uphill battle, as the opposition is more often than not in great numbers and are benefiting from better ground than you'll have. The long-range Macubi can be tough to deal with, and without the invulnerability slash teleporter slash BFG secret, the Cyberdemon presiding over this demonic training ground is pretty much invincible. Infighting is your friend here, a profligate doom guy will definitely run out of ammo. I know what Hillside Siege is trying to do, but the fights are pretty painful and grindy, even when you're doing them right, and with the rise of the triad music it feels more like a hell 
revealed homage than its own thing. In short, it's a miss. Grade, C. Difficulty, B-. Map 7, Showdown. Dead pretty simple. This is a snack of a map from Andrews Johnson, which only gets easier after you waste the Macubi at the start. Systematically eliminate the spiders patrolling the outer walls of the castle and hit two switches to exit. Showdown is no frills, fast, and fun. Not much more you can ask from a map 7 and a classic megawatt. Grade, B, difficulty, D+. Map 8, Beast Island. The expansive and secret-rich Beast Island is one of Alien Vendetta's most memorable levels. It marries solid action with a spirit of adventure, and the results are outstanding. Beast Island is home to some of the Megawad's most scenic views. You'll be traipsing through dark-lit, watery tunnels, squeezing between cliffs, and finally invading a massive island fortress, which you can actually see from afar earlier in the level. A very cool touch. I love this little sequence where you get to telefrag revenants on your way up this seaside cliff. It's artistic and satisfying. The fortress is a little claustrophobic compared to the rest of the level, and that fight with the cyber demon in the courtyard can get ugly if you let him cut off your access to the outside, where you can easily waste him with plasma. Most of the nine secrets are tucked away in the fortress. Some of them are pretty tough to find, but they're critical to your surviving a pistol start. The lighting in this level, especially the darker sections, is truly gorgeous, and the music is great. I'm a huge fan of Beast Island. This gets an A, with a difficulty of B-. Map 9, Castle Gardens. I really disliked this map the first time I played it, maybe because it seems so much more cramped and bland than Beast Island. Castle Gardens is gloomy and fairly packed with monsters. It's relatively short, but not that difficult. This is Kim Andre Malda's first contribution to the Megawad. He's known for his strict attention to detail, lighting-wise, on full display in this brownstone library. You'll also notice how he loves his mobs of chain gunners. Castle Gardens hides its secrets pretty carefully, and finding them will greatly improve your experience. In the text file, Malda writes that this was the first map he ever did for Doom 2. In that case, great job. Nothing particularly stands out about Castle Gardens, and the combat gets a little draggy, but it's still solid work. B- with a difficulty of C-. Map 10, Toxic Touch. In my opinion, and by popular consensus in the Doom community, Toxic Touch is one of the best maps ever made. Using 100% vanilla textures, Kim Andre Malda creates a striking and often beautiful environment. A direct continuation of Castle Gardens, Toxic Touch is intended to be the sewer system directly beneath Map 9's grounds. The color coordination and lighting are superb, and the music drips with atmosphere. When playing Toxic Touch, you get a prevailing sense of everything being in its right place. Every monster, every torch, every shadow fits into the overall construction. There's a flow to the combat that feels highly calibrated, even perfected. The level is overflowing with hit scanners. You'll be mowing down entire corridors of them, and Mala loves to surprise you with arch files. I'm slightly at a loss trying to describe what makes Toxic Touch so memorable, because it's really about the experience of being in the level when it's really quiet. Toxic Touch has an unearthly quiescence and laser focus, and its masterful construction has few peers in Doom mapping. Grade, A+. Difficulty, B-. Map 11, Nemesis. Alien Vendetta is not a perfect megawatt. There's no such thing, of course. Every megawatt has to have that map, the one you dread playing and always have to convince yourself not to skip. Nemesis is that map for me, a twisted, elephantine disaster area that is simply too big, too complicated, and too unwieldy to complete without getting frustrated. I will admit that it's impressive to look at, but a map will lose my respect very quickly if it prioritizes spectacle over fun. Nemesis forces you to spend at least two-thirds of the map squeezing through cramped cave passages. With Doom's janky collision physics, this can get very frustrating and claustrophobic. You're either bouncing off the walls or getting stuck where you're meant to pass right through, and meanwhile you'll be asked to do battle with Mancubi, Chain Gunners, Revenants, and Archviles all in close quarters. It's exhausting. The Marble Castle section is tolerable, except that it's needlessly difficult to get around, and of course you'll be hitting a bunch of critical switches that never give a clear indication of what they do at the time you press them. Hand to God, I still have no idea what exactly opens the exit, which is shoved into an obscure corner of the cave section, and you just wander into it and the level ends. I'm completely okay with non-linear maps, as long as they reward the player for making progress, but Nemesis doesn't do that at all. My problem with this map is that even after playing it five times, I can't tell you what any of the keys do. It always feels like I play the level for 30 minutes and then it spontaneously kind of ends, which in my opinion is seriously defective design. Grade, D-, difficulty, B-. Map 12, Entropy. Entropy is your standard tech-based map and a good introduction to Brad Spencer, who designed this and three of the next four maps in sequence. Compared to what's coming, this map is nothing. 
Although ammo can sometimes get a little spare, they give you a computer map, 11 secrets, and a berserk. By Alien Vendetta standards, that's practically coddling. After you enter the teleporter behind the blue door, you'll be faced with the best fight in the level, a swarm of hit scanners, hell knights, barons, and cacos teleporting into a mosh pit of fun. There's also a great secret that allows you to preempt a BS chain gunner ambush and also nabs you a BFG. Entropy is a fine level. Grade B. Difficulty C+. Map 13. Suicidal Tendencies. Hot damn, this one is hard but fun. Probably my favorite tech-based map in the set. Brad Spencer's Suicidal Tendencies is the first map in Alien Vendetta with over 500 enemies, most of which will come at you in swarms. There are several great set pieces here, each of which deserve attention. Number one, I love this warehouse room where you can unleash a wave of pinkies on the patrolling cyber demon and get them to kill them for you. Number two, mowing down this mob of imps that teleport in after you get the rocket launcher is a reward unto itself. Number three, this armory room full of shotgun shells and monsters is perfect BFG fodder. Number four, it's tremendously entertaining to watch the spider masterminds in the outdoor area go to town on the chain gunners and barons. And number five, the final assault against nine arch vials while you're invincible rides the razor's edge of nastiness and fun. Suicidal tendencies will absolutely burn a first timer who doesn't care about secret hunting, but once you get your bearings, it becomes one of the most entertaining maps in Alien Vendetta. Grade A, difficulty A minus. Map 14, overwhelming odds. Okay, this one is really hard. After a ridiculous start that earns the level its name, you'll be up against yet another overrun tech base, this one containing over 600 monsters. There's not nearly as much health or ammo compared to suicidal tendencies, and the fights are a lot more... well... overwhelming. The blue key room is a BFG fest that affords very limited mistakes. Taking on the pinky horde, followed by cyber demons, followed by two cacodemon clouds is a nail biter. And that last room before the red key, with the army of imps and barons, while it might be infighting 101, is still pretty unforgiving. I think it's a lot more fun to watch someone play this level than to play it yourself. The combat is gripping, but not great for your blood pressure. I like suicidal tendencies better, but more advanced players will definitely love this one. Grade A minus. Difficulty A. Map 15. Bulls on Parade. Bulls on Parade is a welcome relief from the relentless abuse of the last two maps, much smaller and relatively easy. This is another tech-based map, but one sort of cracking at the seams. I like the hints of demonic influence encroaching on the architecture. I kind of hate this revenant fight in this too open courtyard. It's easier to take hits from fireballs directed at other monsters than the ones that are actually tracking you. The final fight in this wooden arena is a real barn burner, ripe for monster infighting and a whole lot of circle strafing. Don't miss the secret exit, which you can find behind a wall across from the real exit. And just take a look at that secret exit room. The lighting, the colors, the architecture, just wow. Bulls on Parade gets a B- with a difficulty of C+. Map 31, Killer Colors. You have to appreciate Killer Colors' commitment to the gimmick. In Alien Vendetta's first secret map, you'll traverse three color-coordinated realms, and when I say color-coordinated, I mean down to the enemy type, and the weapons you'll obtain. In the blue zone, you'll battle specters and cacodemons with your watering can. In the green zone, it's more specters, hell knights, and arachnotrons, and you get a BFG, and a super shotgun, which doesn't fit, but it doesn't matter. Finally, there's the red room, which grants you a rocket launcher and a swift ass kicking. The standout fight here is the Revenant Cyberdemon Deathmatch, for which you'll have just enough ammo, even if you cheese it like I did. There's also a great finale where they give you an invincibility, get it? White is all the colors combined, to take on this ridiculousness. Killer Colors is clever, I'll give it that, but it's a lot more fixated on its own cleverness than it cares about giving the player a good time. Grade, B, difficulty, B+. Map 32, no guts, no glory. In this compact slaughter map, you take the bull by the horns or get eaten alive. Inspired by Hell Revealed's 22nd map, Resistance is Futile, No Guts, No Glory improves on the original, giving the player a hell of a rush without overstaying its welcome. Again, this is Anders Johnson's handiwork, and this time he pulls out all the stops. Strangely enough, this map 32 is not the hardest in the Megawatt, which isn't to say it's easy. <sighs> Just wait till map 25. I will say the archfile placements are sadistic, probably the only part of the map I dislike. I love the toe-to-toe -to -toe cyber demon encounters in the second half of the map, and I don't even like fighting cyber demons, so that should tell you something. As secret maps go, this is one of my favorites. Grade A minus, difficulty A. Map 16, Mutual Destruction. You might be thinking Brad Spencer has gone soft as you plow through the start of Mutual Destruction. Where are the flocks of cacodemons? How about the armies of revenants, pinkies, macubi? What's going on here? Turns out he was saving the best for last. Spencer softens you up with an ear-splitting mob of revenants that you'll barely have the ammo for, and then drops you into a cargo bay that springs six cyber demons on you at once while you scramble for energy cell packs. You know it's a hard room and they give you invincibility and it's still tricky as hell. You better hope you have enough health and ammo to deal with two cliff sides worth of revenants and macubi, platform your way to the final room, and try not to get picked off by six chain gunners. Spencer adds insult to injury by sicking a gang of pinkies on you to wrap up the map. I don't mind mutual destruction, but it's definitely more of a segue map than a main attraction. Grade B, difficulty A-. Map 17, Nukefall. 
Get ready for another Anders Johnson joint. Nukefall is short, and that's the only reason why it's not the hardest map yet. Right off the bat, you'll pass by a cyber demon standing on top of a BFG in a tiny room. Without that BFG, you have no chance of killing that cyber demon or beating the level. You'll need to go through hit scanner hell to obtain the red key, but don't even think about opening the red bars without getting the rocket launcher, which is naturally tucked away in a side hallway of nukage right next to Mr. Sivey Sive. Have fun taking him out. <laughs> Oh, and don't forget, right after this you'll be dealing with 10 archfiles at the exit. Hope you saved your ammo. Nukefall is pitiless, but it's still nowhere close to the cruelest that this wad can get. Footnote, I like the aesthetics, and the use of nukage, brownstone, and mossy green brick is very alien vendetta. Grade B, with the difficulty of A. Map 18, Lake Poison. Lake Poison is near peak alien vendetta content, an intense, intimidating map with a moody atmosphere and impeccable architecture. This Anders Johnson classic finds you in some kind of demonically corrupted slime facility. Unlike Spencer's tech bases, Lake Poison de-emphasizes hit scanners, but ups the ante on the higher HP monster types. You'll be up against nearly 300 imps, 8 archfiles, 69 barons and hell knights, and 12 spider masterminds, the majority of which you'll meet in the jaw-dropping penultimate room. While I love the introduction to the level and the massive imp ambush in the drainage section, Johnson invests heavily in his level's semi-final round, and it really pays off. There are enough supplies and power-ups for you to throw caution to the winds and flex your muscles here. It's one of the most entertaining rooms in the entire WAD. I suspect Johnson could have made it much harder, but I'm really glad he didn't. This is one of my favorite levels in Alien Vendetta, and probably one of the first I'd point to as an exemplar of the Megawad's signature mapping style and brand of combat. Grade A, difficulty A-. Map 19, Alien Resurrection. An extremely brown map that I always pictured as some kind of overrun archaeological dig site, Alien Resurrection isn't as densely populated as some of the recent maps, but packs a wallop. I think the map got its name from the high count of Martian-looking motherfuckers running around raising their dead companions. There are only seven archfiles on the map, but it feels like a lot more, because author Madani El Hariri has a nefarious imagination, and enjoys spawning them into areas where you've just left piles of fresh corpses. I really like this fight with the arachnotrons that pop out of their display cases. The final assault, comprised of two archfiles, a cyber, and a lot of resurrected monsters, will wreck you if you're dumb like me and waste your BFG shots. Alien Resurrection is fairly liberal with ammo, so you should be able to save up for the finale if you know it's coming. This is a fine map, and a stern one. Grade B. Difficulty A-. Map 20, Misery Halek, the mother of all Egyptian levels, Doomworld.com's most memorable map of all time, the crown jewel of Alien Vendetta. Does it live up to the hype? The answer is yes. Misery Halek, which allegedly means Egyptian slaughter in Arabic, is one of the most painstakingly lit, immaculately detailed Doom levels I've ever played. It's Kim Andre Malda's masterpiece, a hypnotic plunge into the long-forgotten halls of a pyramid and beyond. You'll have to contend with not only the tomb's traps, but its volcanic core, and the stony, moonlit cliffside that it's carved into. The amount of contrast that Malda creates with minimal texture variety is very impressive. Not a single room feels like a copy of another. Malda wrote this in the text file. Eliminating the sky can easily result in extremely redundant design, thus it became hard to come up with innovative and varied architecture. The way to get around such a dilemma would be to use a lot, a lot, of light effects and height differences. And I did. Misery Halek doesn't have any Hollywood fights to speak of, preferring to drip feed you revenants, hell knights, and archfiles around every corner, which keeps you pleasantly on your toes without getting overwhelming. The cyber demons on the stairs are nasty, but that's about the only fight that really makes me grip my teeth. All the way through, you'll be accompanied by the only original midi in the WAD, Chris Laverdeur's Fight the Logic If You Can. It's one of the best pairings of music and level design I've ever come across. All I have left to say is Misery Halek is the best level I've ever gotten lost in. Lush, unforgettable, and exquisitely crafted. Grade A+. Difficulty B+. Map 21. One flew over the Kako's Nest. Would you look at that? 73 monsters. And this is map 21? Contrary to what you might think, One Flew Over the Kako's Nest doesn't compare to the craziness that makes up most of Alien Vendetta's final third. Kako's Nest gives you minimal health and ammo, but if you commit to berserk punching as much monster meat as possible, you'll be fine, if kind of bored. 
I have to confess that I find this map to be the ugliest in the whole wad. It looks like the result of an artificial intelligence's effort at a hell map after mining Doom World's archives for inspiration. All the ingredients are there, but the result is a confusing mishmash. I don't know, it just doesn't work. Gotta give this one a D, with a difficulty of C. Map 22, Rubicon. Maybe it's because I played this exact brand of hell level so many times, but Rubicon makes me yawn. As in the previous map, the monster count is quite low, and the fight's comparatively lame. I always have more trouble with these long-range Magibar than I do with the surprise Cyberdemon or the last pair of Archfiles, and I'm not sure what that says about the map in general, but those Magibar sure are annoying. This is Brad Spencer's last level in the WAD, and in my opinion, it's his weakest by a long shot. Grade, C-, difficulty, B. Map 23, Blood Sacrifice. Ugh, this one. Blood Sacrifice is Kim Andrea Malda's last entry, and my god is it brutal. If you aren't devout about using infighting, don't bother with the secrets, and otherwise muck around, Blood Sacrifice will make you pay. Malda doesn't give you any energy weapons outside of secrets, and also sticks you with three wickedly placed cyber demons. Running past them is not usually a good idea, especially with the one by the yellow key. Letting him pin you is an instant death, unless you're a filthy save scummer like myself. A word about the architecture, it's awesome, of course. Malda's castle is brooding and austere, with an atmosphere as bleak as your chances of beating this level without finding the plasma gun. I don't like it as much as Toxic Touch or Misery Halek, but Blood Sacrifice was apparently a labor of love for the author, and it shows. Malva's work tends to grow on you the more time you spend with it, so I'm sure that the longer I play it, the more I'll like it. Grade, B, difficulty, A-. minus. Map 24, Clandestine Complex. Smack in the middle of Alien Vendetta's Hell episode is a short and dweeby tech-based level called Clandestine Complex. When Alien Vendetta was re-released for Competa and usage back in 2002, the authors replaced the original Map 24 with Clandestine Complex, moved the original Map 24 to the 25 slot, and removed the original Map 25, Valley of Echoes, which has a thousand monsters and a dozen cyberdemons in it. I'm... Uh, happy to skip that one. Clandestine Complex is in the unfortunate position of having a backstory more interesting than it is. Zemanski and Soto's hillside siege was way harder, and is much closer to meeting the aesthetic standards of the rest of the WAD, which doesn't really say much for Clandestine Complex. Aside from the music, this one kind of falls on its face. If it were Map 24 of TNT Evolution, Clandestine Complex would look a whole lot better. Grade, D+, difficulty, C. Map 25, Demonic Hordes. F*** this map. No, wait, I can't say that. I'm the Dean of Doom. I have... Integrity, supposedly. Okay, without profanity, this map is traumatic, devastating, exhausting. Hate is a strong word, but I really, really, really don't like it. 1,300 monsters, 236 revenants, 46 archfiles, 17 cyberdemons. It's the demonic hordes. I essentially grandmod my way through this recording. My room is full of blunders, safes coming, and incompetence, and it took me over an hour, which sucks, but honestly, it takes a hashtag doom god to do this in under 30 minutes. The world record is 20 minutes, UV max. That's a top tier player, proverbially going balls to the wall, taking the better part of half an hour on a doom level, and that's probably the furthest thing from fun that I can imagine. Okay, enough with the negativity. I happen to love the aesthetics of this map. This demonic chapel complete with a full congregation is great, and a couple of the secrets you have to break stained glass windows to open, which is genius. I even like some of the ambushes, especially the one by the yellow key, and the one that immediately follows it, with the 10 million arch files that resurrect everything you killed in the previous area. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, painful. The music choice is spot on, even if it's a little oppressive. It's a track called You Suck, the game over music from Rise of the Triad. Yeah, I know I do. Ironically, I think the first big fight is the hardest, because it's too claustrophobic to use rockets and you don't have a BFG yet. Now, if not for two available invulnerabilities, the final fight in this lava gorge with the Archviles, Cyberdemons, and Macubi would easily take the cake. Demonic Hordes is way above my pay grade, and I'm not ashamed to admit it. Grade, B+. Difficulty, X. Map 26, Dark Dome. Dark Dome is the most epic slugfest in Alien Vendetta. It's you against nearly a thousand monsters in a massive cavern, and unlike in Demonic Hordes, most of them are there to greet you right from the start. If you just spent the last hour or so plowing through Map 25 and don't know what you're getting into, the opening sight of Dark Dome might just break your spirit. Now, Dark Dome is definitely punishing, but it's more forgiving and a lot more fun to play than Demonic Hordes. I think it's because it lays everything on the table from the start, and gives you your mission objective straight up, rather than inundating you with room after room of teleport ambushes. That said, my favorite fight in this level is in fact a teleport ambush. The watery room with the blue key is one of my favorite BFG fights in the whole WAD. Anders Johnson really outdid himself with Dark Dome. The architecture is mighty intimidating, and the combat even more so. It's a solid A, with an X- for difficulty. Map 27, Stench of Evil. Yet another gut punch. Stench of Evil is massive and nihilistic. 
the third map in a row with more than 800 enemies. Get ready to bleed profusely and witness some of the most foreboding hell level design of all time. Again, courtesy of Andrews Johnson with some help from Jan Andre Jansen. Ammo deprivation will be your greatest nemesis in Stench of Evil, so be on the lookout for its 13 secrets. Lacking the brutality of Dark Dome or the ranks of demonic hordes, Stench of Evil still feels more exhausting than either of them, probably on account of its sheer square footage and also the music. It's one thing to listen to this track for 5 or 6 minutes in E1M5, and quite another to cope with it for well over half an hour here. As debilitating as Stench of Evil can get, I do appreciate the visuals, especially these blue caves, which I always think of as being carved out of a giant sapphire, and this aesthetic as hell in Fight Room. The ludicrous wall of chain gunners near the end usually makes me chuckle, because it can hardly hit you and 90% of them end up gunning each other down before you can get up close. I have to confess, this is one of my least favorite maps in Alien Vendetta, because I don't enjoy being crushed in the embrace of despair, and that's kind of how I feel when I play Stench of Evil. I'll have to give it a B because it's undoubtedly memorable, and it gets an X- for difficulty. Map 28, Whispering Shadows. Whispering Shadows is a gorgeous level that I absolutely hate. I think it's my second least favorite in the Megawad for three reasons. This Cyberdemon, this Cyberdemon, and this Cyberdemon. The first one you can run past and blatantly disrespect later, but it took me a while to figure that out. The second one you'll most likely have to chop down with the Super Shotgun if you want to progress, which is bland design to put it kindly. And this one... Andrews Johnson has a fixation with cyberdemons and cramped spaces that I just don't understand. Oh, and there's Archviles too! Thanks a lot, man! The rest of the combat is puerile compared to what's come before, and frankly not that enjoyable aside from this cacodemon attack, followed by this mob of revenants. Some of the secrets are flat out bad. Like this soul sphere you can strafe jump to with great difficulty through this blood drippage, and this other one? I still don't know how slash don't care to get that one. I don't care about getting 100% kills either, because sometimes, as you know, it's just not worth it. Footnote, this level does look great. Fine work, Anders. Grade D, difficulty A. Map 29, Fire Walk With Me. I love this level's name almost enough to forgive Anders Johnson for this apocalyptic revenant attack, which is just the worst thing ever. Outside of that PTSD-inducing episode, Fire Walk With Me is considerably easier than most of Alien Vendetta's final act. Map 27 probably would have been more appropriate as a penultimate level, but part of me feels like the player deserves a break at this point. But don't worry, there's still plenty of point-blank cyberdemons to curse the existences of. I actually really like the part where you climb into the jaws of this dead creature and face the Wad's chumpiest monster closet in his innards. Just look at that. How is it that this army of revenants and this shrimpy ambush are in the same level? And why are there torches in this big demon's intestines? You know what? I don't even care anymore. The exhaustion is fully kicking in at this point. I love this hill full of spazzy chain gunners who will again mostly kill themselves, and the hanging imps silhouetted in the distance. It's an awesome visual. Save some cells for on your way out, when Anders surprises you with a swinging door and one last cyberdemon in your f***ing face. Yay. Grade B-, difficulty A-. And map 30, Point Dreadful. I'll give Point Dreadful this, its opening room looks phenomenal. The rest, well, it's an icon of sin map, that is, worthy of being save scum to death. The idea here is that you hit a switch at the top of a hill, hop on an invisible elevator, fire a rocket at the icon's brain, climb back up the hill on some finicky lifts, and repeat two more times. The bottom lift is the hardest to catch, even if you're strafe running, it will start rising right as you catch it. Point Dreadful is a perfunctory conclusion to a superior megawad. I blame Doom 2 for inventing the Icon of Sin, and salute Anders Johnson for trying to make an inherently flawed concept work. Grade C-, difficulty B. So, Alien Vendetta is a beast. Though it initially sought to pattern itself after Hell Revealed and the Plutonia experiment, it effortlessly outpaces those two wads in terms of creativity, visual appeal, action, and fun. It's like a pilgrimage every time I replay it, ending in a baptism of fire that's as intense as anything in all doomdom. It's a world unto itself, it has atmosphere and energy to burn, and as we're coming up on the 20th anniversary of its release, I'd say it has withstood the test of time. My final grade for this absolute classic is an A. Which I'll save you the suspense, that's as good a grade that a megawatt made before 2015 is going to get on this channel. As for difficulty, I'm grading it an A+, meaning it'll make all but the most vaunted doomed deities sweat profusely. So here's my Dean's list. The Valedictorian is Map 20, Misery Halek. Salutatorian, Map 10, Toxic Touch. Class President, Map 25, Demonic Hordes. And the dunce cap goes to map 11. I just 
I, I gotta. I sometimes bring out the honor roll for very special wads, and this one definitely deserves it. Shout out to map 8, Beast Island. Map 13, Suicidal Tendencies. Map 32, No Guts, No Glory. Map 18, Lake Poison. And map 26, Dark Dome. Thank you very much for watching, and please feel free to share your thoughts on the wad in the comments. I'd love to hear what you think about this one especially. This is Mount Payne 27, and I'll see you in the next episode of Dean of Doom.